Welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Jake Gordon and Alex or Jake. I wanted to wait to talk about this game in its entirety until you are on the show because you are a resident Georgia Bulldog, and I want to know how you are feeling because the line is uh, very peculiar, let's say. I mean, Georgia hasn't covered a spread. They are hosting Kentucky, who looked fantastic against Florida. They ran the ball all over the yard. They looked good in most all of their games. They're undefeated. You know they're going to be hype coming in this game. At the same time, Stanford Stadium is going to be rocking. It always is. This is a bit one of the bigger matchups that they've had at home. It's a night game? Yeah, it's a night game. You get a night game at home. It's going to be rocking. It's going to be rocking. Lines at 14 and a half, which basically says this is going to be a blowout uh, for all, you know, pretty much. Is that how you see it? Like, is Georgia get their first cover? Because Kirby Smart, I'll say this. And then I'll let you go against ranked teams. This team, this Georgia team over the last three years has been a different beast, has been a different beast, especially at home. They just go out there and dominate ranked teams. Every time you think someone could come into their building and give them a run for their money. That's not how it happens. But I think we can all agree. And I think you can even agree. This Georgia team isn't the same as the last two years. Yeah, no, that's correct. So I I felt really bad about this game earlier in the week. I'm starting to feel a lot better because of what, what I'm noticing. So uh, Georgia, what I've noticed, some of their biggest problems have been is that they cannot set. They have not been setting the edge. Uh, that's why Auburn was just running wild with this quarterback run. Uh, they were having success with a lot of outside zone runs. <clears throat> and that's why they ran the ball so well. And, you know, even if you take away that, you know, 67-yard run by their quarterback, kind of an outlier, they still ran for a decent amount of yards. They didn't pass for that many yards, but, you know, they ran the ball. And, you know, if you watch the Kentucky-Florida game, which I watch pieces of, Kentucky – I mean, I think Kentucky ran for 350 yards. They ran all over Florida. But the problem is, if you watch that game, Kentucky was running into the teeth of Florida's defense. They were running it straight up the middle, pushing them off the line. And that's not where Georgia has been struggling this year. Georgia has been struggling on the edge. People have not been running the ball up the middle on Georgia. It's just been on the edge. And so that's the thing. Is Kentucky, I think, is still going to try to run the ball up the middle against Georgia. And I don't think it's going to work. Uh, As I've always said about Kentucky, they're a good team. They're a good program. I think Mark Stoops is one of the more stable coaches in all of college football. But basically what they are, they're Georgia light. And they kind of have been for a few years. And they have a chance to beat them. this If if they're ever going to beat them, it it should be this year. But the thing is, there's a few few problems with this Kentucky team. If you look at them, uh, they give up a ton of huge plays in the passing game. And Georgia, I think think it's like in the top 15 for explosive passing plays over 20 yards. So Georgia can exploit them in the secondary. Kentucky is also very heavily penalized. Once again, night game at home. Uh, they're pretty bad on third down. Georgia has been great on third down. This is not a great matchup for them as much as people would think. If you look at the box score and you see, oh, they ran all over uh, Florida and Auburn ran all over Georgia. Kentucky is going to run all over Georgia. That's not how this is going to be. Kentucky has a really bad pass offense. Georgia's pass defense is their strength this year. i I think Georgia does finally cover a spread. I didn't feel good about this game at the beginning of the week, but as the week goes along, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. I tend to agree with a lot of what you're saying. Um, the uh, question marks for this Georgia team are on the defense and and the offensive line uh, for sure. Um, but the, I agree the, with the, you. Uh, the exterior Kentucky, of the defensive line, yes. The Kentucky the Kentucky offense is a traditional run. You know, 08, 09, Alabama run between the tackles. Uh, and to Jake's point, Georgia's as stout up front as they've ever been. Uh, and, you know, we can, you know, talk about the X's and O's and uh, gap integrity and run fits and things like that. A lot of the run game, at least in college football, comes down to beating the man across from you. And Kirby Smart gets his guys up. And I think that Chase's original point about how Kirby Smart against these ranked opponents where, you know, you could think back to last year's Tennessee game where everybody's thinking, oh, is this the – no, not today. Kirby Smart gets up for these games. He gets these boys up for these games. Devin Leary is just not even close to as athletic as that Auburn quarterback was. Um, and I do think that a lot of the noise uh, coming in on Beck I, – I don't know how it's been recently. I'm not as active on George. Carson, Twitter, yeah, but- Carson Beck. Has he not is been, not. Carson Beck uh, is he, like not in the top ten of issues. He's been pretty good, yeah. actually. He had a couple of misses in the first half against Auburn that you know y- you hate to see, uh, but for the most part, the guy was dialed in on third down. I think the biggest thing is how George's defense on third down is going to be. It's going to be third and six to third and ten all game long. Can Devin Leary convert those third downs? Probably not. That's what I'm going to say. Probably not against this Georgia team. 
I think uh, yeah, and here's the thing too is even against Auburn, Auburn, I think in the first in the first half of that last game, you know, Auburn obviously they got some turnovers and they look, hey, Auburn knew what they could and couldn't do, and they formulated a game plan around that. And they executed, yeah. and that's why that game. Hot tips to Hugh Freeze. And I don't think there's a lot. Yeah, exactly. Of, uh, I think that they're catching Georgia at a bad time. Uh, you come yes. off a game like that. I think Carson Beck got a lot of confidence from that game. I think Carson Beck's a really good quarterback, and I think he's mm-hmm. only going to get better uh, with right. each passing yes. game. Uh, I think that playing a night game in Sanford Stadium, obviously not the ideal situation because Georgia <laughs> never gets night games. So you know that place is going to be even more riled up than it would have been at 3.30 or noon, which is still a ridiculously tough place to play. And then I think the matchup is interesting. It kind of feels like – one of these games where they've been talking all week about how they can't stop the run and how Kentucky can run the ball. They're going to hold them for like 50 yards. And Georgia's just going to have a boa constrictor type attitude. We really see this Georgia defense step up and make plays. Now I I think, I think, and I think they're going to make enough plays offensively to score points. It really, it really screams to me. Like, I don't think they're going to cover by like three touchdowns. It's not like if you're betting Georgia, like you're going to have to sweat it, but like it could easily be 27 to 10. 34 to 17 something like that where there's not a lot of room to run maybe Kentucky makes a play or two offensively whether it be on the run or through the air but I don't think it's going to be anything like this Auburn game and I do think Georgia's offense is coming around I I really like Carson Beck I really think he's a good quarterback see I think yeah, it, it's it, gonna it, have... it, it, go ahead oh yeah real quick I was gonna say last week Auburn started like 0 for 8 on third downs uh and then of course they started getting a few in the second half because that game was just if you watch that game which I'm sure most people did it was just it was weird it was weird you know, it was a Jordan Hare, it was a Jordan Hare classic. It was weird. Yeah, and I think a lot of what happened transpired, you could chalk up to Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze knew exactly what he didn't have and Georgia's defense's weaknesses, and he attacked them. Uh, it was almost gimmicky, uh, if you could say that. It wasn't, you know, double reverse fake pass or anything like that, but it was sort of gimmicky. Kentucky doesn't have gimmicky. that gimmicky. I mean, Kentucky's going to, you know, run the ball downhill, and that's what they're good at. Uh, and Georgia's going to be ready for this game. I think that – uh, to Chase's point, I think that Georgia could win this game by three scores. I really do. I think this is Georgia's defense coming out party because Kentucky doesn't do anything special. They don't try and trick you. They do unless you know they pull out all the stops this week. If they pull out all the stops, then I'll eat my words. But they're just not as creative as Auburn as Hugh Freeze is, who is one of the most creative yeah. uh, offensive minds. And, and last point, I always say this about Brock Bowers. People ask why Georgia doesn't use Brock Bowers that much. I always say Brock Bowers is my is is UGA is there is a concealed carry Glock. They only pull him out when they need him, and they needed him last week, and they pulled him out, and you saw what happened. God, he's yeah, one, of, one of the one of the, the best tight end to ever play in college football, yeah. in my opinion. Coming up after the break, Mac Hollins talks his incident on the sideline with Desmond Ritter. We are going to discuss it. 